friends welcome on board joy fiddle international today we're going to be talking about something really exciting and i am also excited ready to chat with you my name is joy fiddle and i will be chatting with you on something really exciting that will blow your mind so let's get on to it So our topic today it's really mind-blowing um, for reasons that when it came to my vision I realized oh my goodness this is something really really good and I must share as always so what is the message the message is about love about sacrifice and about success now this is so amazing because this is the end of the year we are already 2017 is going and 2018 is coming in and I feel if we get this message right we're gonna see a completely new version of ourselves in 2018 so question now is that I will ask you and I'm asking myself is what would you pay for love what price would you pay for love how much is your love worth so I'll take us slightly into the Bible for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so that's John 3 16 God so loved the world he gave Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins because we had all come short of the glory of God. And it was so bad and God didn't know how to deal with us. He just said, unless I do something that will really make me feel again about these people. And that's why he gave his only son. That shows you how much he loves us. But how did this message come to me? I, I, was, I was watching, I was on YouTube the other day and I was just watching different things coming to me and i saw this title by bishop td jakes and the title was don't waste your love on people who don't love you and i was curious that's interesting let me watch this what is this about so i started watching and then the big message came the big message was about sacrifice so you remember we said three things love sacrifice success so if you love something enough you will sacrifice to get that thing and then getting that thing is success so they walk hand in hand so let's go into another scenario this is in Genesis I don't know the exact chapter right now because I didn't note it down, but I know it. Abraham was tested by God. Now you know the story behind Abraham getting into really old age before having children. Sarah, his wife, didn't have a child. I think she was either 70 something or 90 something when they now had their, their son Isaac. You remember it, it was so bad, Sarah thought she would never have children again and said, you know what? Abraham, you can sleep with Hagar and have a child, no problem. Then God blessed her and gave her Isaac. So now, today, we, most of us, most women, go through this process of struggling. Go through all the medical series, trying to make things happen so they can have children. And so, imagine all that goes on now. Surrogate mother. Um, paying for all these scientific miracles and then you have a child and God says to you I want you to sacrifice that only child for me being human that we are today how many of us would do it but Abraham listened because Abraham loved God so much that he was willing to give his only son Isaac for sacrifice to show proof of love 
and so when he was just about to do it he took his son yes went when he was just about to sacrifice his son God said stop I've seen your heart you really do love me so that sacrifice when you're willing to give so much for something that that you love so let's come back again to to human life like we are you're a mother now they call it that maternal instinct i know not all women have it but most women have it you know the minute you realize you're pregnant with a child and this person is growing inside you you will do everything you can to protect this child now that's love that's sacrifice a mother will sit up all night to watch the child at sick I have four of them and I know what I went through and I remember once I was ha having a child with a friend of mine and we were saying men don't really understand this thing we call love and we said and I thought oh yeah it must be this maternal in instinct thing in women because God just gave it to us based on the fact that we have given up our body to have another life come to life. And so that's us women, how we will, a woman will, will jump in front of a car, I've heard all kinds of stories, in order to take the child away from danger. A woman will jump into the river after the child because the child fell in, you know. So that's what they call sacrifice. Sacrifice is about losing in order to gain. So that's a big message for all of us coming 2018. What are you willing to lose in order to gain? To gain something that you really want. And so the, for most of us, we, we all say, I want to achieve success. I want success. You hear everyone, I want success. But apparently when the, 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 the reality comes of now, how much are you willing to give up in order to achieve this sacrifice, I mean this success, lots of us lose the track. We lose it. Because we're not willing to put something down in order for something to come out of it. And so, the, the, you know, we're working with a God that sacrifices. <laughs> and this will really be a big message for us Christians because most of us are not willing to give anything. We think it's all about just prayers. Let me just pray and God will answer me. Let me just pray and God will answer me. God is waiting for our sacrifice. Just like he waited for Abraham to show that he could sacrifice his son for him. That thing he loved so much, he could give it up. So sacrifice is about giving up something. What are you willing to give up in order for you to get something? And so that's a big message. And if we can take this message with us to 2018. Sacrifice is denial. So you wanna deny your body of some pleasures Okay, so sacrifice is denial. Sacrifice is giving up. Sacrifice is starving yourself of something, of pleasure. And I'll give you examples. So, you say you want to achieve success in your exams. Exam time is coming up. I want to achieve success in this. I want to get a good grade. And you're not willing to sit up all night. Give up your pleasure of sleeping. So you can sit up and read. That's sacrifice. Sitting down, sitting up all night, forgetting everything else around you and saying, I know what I want to achieve here. I want to achieve success at the end of this exam. So let me sacrifice my time. Let me sacrifice my sleep. Let me sacrifice my, my parties, my hanging around my friends. Let me sacrifice sitting on the um, Instagram and, and Snapchat and Facebook and and focus on achieving this result. 
that sacrifice. You wanna you wanna get success with your business. Let me sacrifice by going out there and doing flyers to the right audience. Let me sacrifice by sitting up and doing videos like I'm doing now. If the plan was to achieve people through uh, social media, let me sacrifice by writing up blogs that connect with people that are looking at the kind of things that I look at. Let me sacrifice by taking trips and reaching out to the people I want to reach. Let me sacrifice by investing in new ideas in the business. That's sacrifice. Because you have to invest something in order to get something. And most times I'd say to all of us, you know, most of us just want to reap. We don't want to sow. And I know we, I've given examples of, you know, sports people. For example, Ronaldo or um, uh, what's this one that really always the best in, in running? We don't see behind the scenes how much these people sacrifice. They cut out foods that they would have loved to eat in order to stay in that state of health. They take up strenuous exercises in order to be ready. They push themselves to the limit. That is sacrifice. So question nine is, what pleasure could you deny yourself of in order for you to achieve this success? Because sacrifice is about denying yourself of something. And where love comes into this is the ultimate goal is because of something you love. And that's what success is. You want to get to that thing that you want. And I'll give you another, this is another interesting one. You know, the, the designers of luxury brands, they've got this psychology on us. Most of us who only love designer brands. And you know what we do? No matter how much they tell you that designer brand costs, you will buy it. Why? Because you're hooked up on it. Because you love it so much, the price is not the problem. I will sacrifice everything else. I don't want to buy another shoe. I don't want to buy another bag. I, don't, I just want that Gucci bag. I just want that Louis Vuitton bag. I don't care how much it costs. Everything else can wait. That is sacrifice. So you're sacrificing everything else in order for you to have this one thing. And so if we can begin to understand this is what sacrifice means. We can start aiming for success come 2018. Because it would not matter if we have to sit up all night to research a topic that's going to be useful to our audience. We're aiming for this uh, uh, success. It will not matter how much a training course costs. You will look for the money. You will save it slowly. Because you know that I will lose this little money in order for me to get bigger money. You lose in order to gain. That's sacrifice. And I don't want to pick on a race or a particular people. But I know in my line of business, especially with the braiding training, I get people call me here all the time. I want to do your course. I want to do your course. And the minute I mention how much it costs, they filter away. Why? Because they're not willing to sacrifice for what they're looking for. They're not willing to invest. I talk about investment all the time. If you don't invest in yourself, what will you invest in? Because the big message is, it is you that's going to create the success that you are looking for. It is you that's going to bring all these things into your life. But you are not willing to invest in you. And this is where I tell you, I was in university years ago, and I remember my teacher saying, there's no free lunch in life. So it was a good message for us young girls then who thought, oh yeah, you go hang out with men and, you know, go out and have 
a beautiful lunch and come back, you know, you're not losing anything. And she said, there's no free lunch. Because this man who's giving you this lunch will ask for something. So you need to think. So if you want to invest in yourself and all you want is for the course to be free, um, they shouldn't ask me to pay for it. Because if they ask me to pay, I'm going. How do you think you're going to get better in life? So that's where sacrifice comes in. You have to be willing to put down something. Put down. Question is, what are you willing to put down in order for you to achieve the things you are looking for? So I want us to transfer love into success. So God loved us so much he gave his only begotten son. What type of success do you love to achieve that you're willing to sacrifice something for it? And I'll give you a good example. Lots of us, we carry a lot of excess weight. I say us because I know, or maybe I don't have the idea weight. I really don't know. I'm not really bothered to find out. But there's so many people out there with excess weight that they don't want. Now, this is the question. You have weight and there's a choice. There's a solution. There's something you can do. There's so many options. You could watch what you eat. But you know what? Most of us are not willing to sacrifice the test board. It's about our test board. Oh, it's not, you know, it's not sweet enough. And trust me, my kids are good examples as well. My son, if it's not sugary, co sugar coated, these days he's trying. Because I try to force the vegetable. I say, son, this vegetable will help you. That's what brings vitamins into your body. This is what will help you from getting sick. So try and eat it. So now he's slowly drinking. But there's so many people out there who will not touch anything that's not sweet. But then you're complaining about your health, and you're complaining about weight. These things don't come, they're, they're, they're not magic. They don't come from the sky. So the things we put into our body shows its result on the outside. That's how simple it is. So are we willing to sacrifice that test board in order for us to stay healthy? Are we willing to go to the gym and work it out. I know I don't, but well, I'm around, I'm active enough. I do things, I walk around, yes. But I know there are people who everywhere they go, they must sit in the car. Luxury life. So, how many of us are willing to do the walking and do the running and do the activities in order for our body to stretch out a bit for us to have a slimmer, you know, body? Because it's simple, it's like give and take. So that's sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice, you know, for I call it short term pain for long term gain? So give up something today which is actively using my body. Give up something today which is eating healthier options so that my body will be healthy. How many of us are willing to do that? Sacrifice for success. So success is a a slimmer body, success is a healthier body. But success comes at a price. And the price is watching what you eat. The price is being active enough. That is the sacrifice. And I remember, you know, because I, I do write, you know, quite a lot of my exciting things that comes to me. And I said, behind the door of challenge lies success. So the challenge is are we willing to actively watch what we eat so that we can achieve success that's challenge the challenge is in our face what can we give up in order to achieve what we're looking for okay so we're back so you want to pass exams but you're not willing to put in the time to read and forget the parting i think we mentioned that already the partying, the sitting down and just playing with social media and not um, focusing on your book. You want to get rich, 
and this is a very big one i especially those of us in africa and nigeria in particular i'm from nigeria and trust me i know everybody you meet in nigeria wants to get rich they just want to get desperately rich and we know what goes on in the sense of corrupt politicians who the minute they get into the position of power they just turn it around to be their personal thing it's not about sharing it's not about giving to the people it's about let me let me amass everything that's there let me just keep it here for me and my children we are the only people that count let them just continue to suffer and i don't care so let's forget them let's focus on those of us who are normal people walking around in nigeria and of course the rest of the world what are we willing to sacrifice in order to achieve wealth because i was watching i i went on internet the other day and i said i just want to see the top wealthy and we looked at i think the top 10 wealthiest people and one of the interesting things that was common among all of them is they were all philanthropists and at least the good thing with the western world is you can tell from where their wealth is coming from so at the time we checked is the owner of amazon that was the top the richest man they all have philanthropic organizations where they're giving back to society because they've got from society but when you look into each of their stories, you will see how they put in time. Where they researched, where they looked for people, where they focused, where they did all they had to do, where they sacrificed in order to be where they are. So that's again where our message is coming from. How much are we willing to sacrifice in order to have results, in order to succeed, in order to show we love this thing. So most of us again want to be loved oh my gosh no one loves me no one really cares about me but we're not willing to love people too we're not willing to sacrifice for love this is a really big one because i know so many people i know so many people who just want to be loved by people that they will not love remember what we said you do not expect to reap where you did not sow you have to give in order to be given you have to sacrifice god so loved the world he gave his only son he so loved underline loved he gave his only son if you want people to love you learn to love them too learn to give all the time i come here i'm quite happy to share the things i know i'm happy to give what i know i'm happy to share my knowledge to share my skill to share my experiences this is what love means there are people who would die with all the knowledge they have because it's just too much for them to give it to other people why should i share my knowledge with other people do they know what i went through to get that knowledge i invest every day in knowledge every day and when i get it i share it people who know me the first thing you will know about me is i'm happy to share what i know with you i'm happy to give but you know what? There are people out there, no matter how much you give them, they just want to take, 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 take. But unfortunately, let, let me tell you something. If you're one of those people, you don't get back. You may take as much as you think you're taking, but you see, there's something about nature. They say nature has no vacuum. Nature has no vacuum means if there's no room here, nature will not put something there. So if you have been taking and taking and taking and taking and you filled up everywhere around you, you're not going to get new things because nature is waiting for space. So this is why you have to learn to give. When you give, nature gives you back. And that's why knowledge comes to me just like that. People wonder, how do you know these things? How do you wake up with this information? I, and I know that the more I give, the more nature gives me back. 
Because from one thing, another will come. And then another will come. And so let's remember that coming 2018. To start giving. And this again is a big one for us in Nigeria. We, those of us who think we are rich there, uh, I'm just saying those of us, because I'm not one of them, but by God's grace I will get there. You get to Nigeria and you see this so-called rich people and they stay in their rich environment and they don't want to know about other people everybody else is a peasant and then when major things happen to them then they wonder where is God why is God not answering me because you think you think that success is just money success is not just money success is everything else to the point of your happiness at the end of everything we chase in life happiness is the biggest of them all because if you're not happy of what use is the money of what use is the big huge house and 20 of it of what use is the aircraft and the and 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 the fleet of cars and for men and the tons of girlfriends and for women or the designer clothes of what use is all of that if there is no happiness so learn to open your heart to give to people such that God will give you back. And you, the, the sooner you learn to love and care for other people, the sooner people will care for you. That's a big message on love. The sooner you learn to love, the sooner you'll be loved. So, Re reading this whole thing or listening to this whole thing about sacrifice really really made me think and I felt so good because now I think I may have been on the right track before but I think I'm a completely new person now I'm going to understand I now understand the value of sacrifice and now understand that if God could use his only son to sacrifice for us if Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, I don't know what we cannot sacrifice today in order to get what we're looking for. And another interesting thing is most of us, this is a good one, most of us just sit out there and we watch people who are successful. We just watch them. And you know what we do? We hate them for being successful. Is there any need for that? Because the interesting thing is, while you're hating them for being successful, you could also be successful if you're willing to sacrifice. But you know where the difference comes? The minute you have to think of sacrificing something, the road stops. It stops there. I'm not willing to sacrifice anything. I'd rather just sit here and hate her for being so good at what she does. What you don't know is what she's been through in order to be good at what she does. What none of us know is what Ronaldo has been through to become who he is. We don't know what the owner of Amazon had been through in order to be the top or the richest man or Richard Branson or uh, Microsoft owner. We don't know what sacrifice they gave him to achieve that. But we will just sit here and be so angry. I know, I mean, we, we all get so wound up that the top 2% on half of the world. But why? And all of us just work for them we don't know what they went through so if some of us are willing to put in some sacrifice we may see a result we may see a result which is where god has said i mean from what bishop T. D. Jakes was saying he says our god is a god of sacrifice so success is already waiting for us that's the big message success is waiting for us Love is waiting for us. All we have to do is sacrifice to achieve it. Do you see how easy this is? All you have to do if you want to be the best at 
bread in here is sacrifice your time and some money and you'll be the best at it you want to be a chef sacrifice some time and some money and go on learn it you want to be good at uh, um, blogging sacrifice some time watch other people who have been doing it like now we have a workshop coming up in London okay for people who have been following us the date has changed it's not 19th January again it's 23rd February I have decided to sacrifice my day my time and come and give my knowledge give my experiences give my skill on how i got onto youtube to create a channel and i've thrown the information out there no people are still waiting someone actually asked me um is there somewhere i can park my car there i mean i have no problem with parking car but like i just said I travel to London two days a week to go and learn and how I go through that whole process I don't go announcing my pain to people so if the least you can do for a free workshop is find a way to drive your car to wherever it is and if you have to pay because the, the question wasn't just park car it was free car park if you have to pay to park your car there is that too much sacrifice to give in order to gain knowledge i don't know but that's where i have issues with people and this is where i begin to wonder maybe my time is a wrong time with the people i'm dealing with because people are not willing to invest anything but they are willing to have the highest success and you know what's funny when they say successful people they say oh she's lucky she's so lucky you don't know what goes on behind the doors you don't know the strenuous exercises they're taking you don't know and I, I know one of my students who at the moment who at the moment is into weight loss and i see her videos i see her videos from time to time i see her actually physically working out and I see the sacrifice she's putting in I see it now you will see people who will watch her and say oh she's so lucky she's so lucky look at how look at how she looks so beautiful she's so lucky luck has nothing to do with it If it was just luck, I'm sure all of us alive are lucky because again, we all went through a very strenuous process before we got here um, on earth, the process of being born, the process of being carried by our mom, the process of being the only sperm that actually germinated and became you because apparently there are millions that are flying through to the womb and only you got in. So that's a lot of luck for all of us but you know it is not luck that then gives you what you get in life what you get in life you work for it you put the sacrifice in you put the effort in you wake up early in the morning you sleep late at night you travel down wherever it takes you years ago when i started in hair i took so many trips to the u.s various states i took trips to nigeria i bought as much dvds as i could find on any hairstyle i saw i was curious but today you say to people come on i'm i'm ready to show you what i've amassed over time this knowledge i put together over time and they're not willing to do it a lady actually said to me that her husband said to her um, that's too much money what would you be learning so I asked her I said is your husband coming for the course oh no he doesn't know anything about hair so he doesn't know anything about hair but he knows that what you'll be learning is not worth that price 
that sacrifice for you. And it, it, this is an interesting one. This is what I remind us every day. If you think you will remain in that position where you are, using the same knowledge you've had all your life, and then suddenly change your life for the better, then that's where you're making a huge mistake. And that's what psychologists, personal development, motivation speakers, that's what they call madness. Because if you are using the same knowledge that created your scenario now, right now, to think that that same knowledge will give you a better scenario, it's a huge mistake. It's not going to change. It will remain the same till you change that knowledge. And this is one of the biggest things I'm taking on to share with the world. You have to change your knowledge to change your life. And knowledge does not come free. You're not going to just sit on your own and knowledge hey presto is in your face. You have to research. You have to ask questions. You have to travel. You have to put money down. You have to be everywhere in order to have new knowledge. New knowledge is what will help you to change the way you see things. And this is one of the prayers I have all the time to God. Help me see what I'm not seeing. Because you know what's funny? All these things are already here. They are already here. Someone said to me, I can't remember, maybe one of the events I went to, and he said, the people who invented the cars, did they have to invent the things they use in making the cars? You remember in those days when it was the chariots and the horses, and did they have to do something new? No, they used the same things that were already here. The people who invented the aeroplane, they used the same materials that were already here. So what it is, we don't know what the new things are that maybe God, we haven't been, re he hasn't been revealed to us. The solutions to our problems are all here already. Especially those of us in Africa. I go home and I, I just weep most times. Because look around us, the solutions are all there. But we don't have the right know-how to bring them about. The materials are there, but we don't have the know-how to bring them about. And so we sit there with all the oil underneath our ground, and then other people, other countries will come and sip it all away. And then they refine it, and then they bring it back to us at ridiculous prices. But they got it from us. And they come there and they take all the diamond from the same ground in Africa, and they take it away and they refine it. And diamond is unreachable for us Africans. Same thing with gold. Same thing with various types of um, 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 natural, natural um, stones that are all over in Africa. Same thing with oils. I mean, a good example is the shea butter. And I go home and I take so much. And then you come here, you see creams. I remember I did a, I did a short time job with Amazon. That's another story for another day. And while I was looking at the job, I was doing things. They call it towing. I was towing, and I saw this tiny little cream. Now you will know the value of something when where you put it becomes put one there and don't put two. And on the packaging of this cream, it said two percent with added. 2% shea butter. 2% shea butter. I have 1,000% shea butter in my house. And nobody wants to know. Why? Because we haven't got the know-how to make that shea butter look so beautiful that everybody will want it. And I remember I was back home once and my, my young girlfriend that helps me out and she was saying to me, um, I don't touch shea butter at all because I said to her, could you buy me a whole tub? And she said, no, no, what do you use that for? I said, it's cream. I use it for my cream, my children's cream. All of us use it. She said, no. I tried it on my daughter and it made, it made her so dark. But shea butter is sunscreen. And 
like I thought, wow, I know so many of us Nigerians who will not touch shea butter with a with a pole because it's smelling, it's disgusting, it's not good enough. But you come here and you buy chemical-based cream and they've only been able to add 2% shea butter and you spend whatever it is on it. So this is where our issue is. We don't, we're using same old knowledge hoping we can get a different result. We have to change our knowledge in order to achieve a different result. I know I've, I've dragged this on for too long because I love this subject so much. Sacrifice! So, lack of sacrifice is the reason we don't succeed. We are not succeeding. This is something you have to take with you from today. Anytime you're not succeeding, tell yourself, I haven't sacrificed enough. And that's what I'm telling myself from now onwards. If I haven't achieved the result I'm looking for, I know that the reason it hasn't happened is because I haven't sacrificed enough. Because, like the man says, God has already done it. It's for us to show him our sacrifice. That's what God is waiting for. Show me your sacrifice and you'll get what you're looking for. Now that we know, let's hope our 2018 gets better. And things are going to change for us. And you remember what we said earlier. Success and love requires us to lose. When you lose, you gain. So that's a big message for us. When we lose that money that we think, I want to hold on to this money, why should I spend it? But if you don't spend it on this, you're going to spend it on that. And that's the thing with money. Money has no value unless it has been used. And so if you're thinking, I cannot release my money in order for me to learn a skill, well, hold on to your money and cut it and put it in the pot and eat it. Because eventually you're going to spend that money on something and then you come around to you're still lacking a skill. You're still lacking knowledge. You're still lacking to change your life because you were trying to hold on to money. So short-term pain for long-term gain. So I'm going to stop here because um, I've dragged it longer than I wanted to. Thank you so much for watching and for all my friends on Facebook, thank you for being part of us. Everybody that's been part of us on YouTube, we're so, so proud of you. We absolutely appreciate all of you. And this is why we continue to sacrifice to be here so that we can share what we know with you. We're hoping 2018 will be a better, greater year for all of us. Thank you again and God bless you. Remember to share this message with your friends. Remember to subscribe if you haven't. Remember to like if you don't like or if you haven't been liking. So thank you again and see you soon in the next video. Bye for now. How, many, how much of your time are you willing to give up in order for you to, to, to achieve a skill? So a good example, maybe you were dreaming of being a photographer. Maybe you wanted to come and learn how to braid with me or, you know, learn how to uh, uh, do weaves or learn how to create beautiful wigs like, like the one I've got on, which I created. Learn how to put extensions on clients. Learn how to be a chef. Take up a course, like now I'm, I'm in the process of doing a course in travel and tourism. It is so strenuous. The time I travel to London every day, the time I come back, the time I'm in class, the assignments. But that's my sacrifice. So how many of us are willing to do that? In order that at the end of it all, they'll say, wow, look at my certificate. Look at the skill I can, I, can, I, can, I can do this on your head. Look at what I know how to do. I can do this now. I can do that now. That's the challenge. That's what we have to do to make 2018 better for us. We have to be willing to invest time and money. And this is one of the first things I say to students when they call me here, I say, how much time have you got and how much money have you got willing to put down in order for you to see this result that you're looking for? Because results don't just 
appear at your door. Results will not go to you when you're sleeping and knock on you and say, wake up here. That's the result you were looking for. Here it is. And according to uh, 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 Bishop uh, uh, T.D. Jakes, he says, we walk with a God of sacrifice. So while we are praying to him, please God, I want this, I want this. He's actually waiting for us to put in the sacrifice. Do you see how easy this is now? That's why I say to you, starting this, I say, I am so excited because now I have gotten the picture as well. Trust me, when I come to sit here and chat with you about things, it's not because I just want to throw things at you. It's because I want to learn as well. I learn from the things I get. I am sitting here in front of this camera. It's a sacrifice. Because I could have been sitting and folded with my legs high up. You know, this is winter. You know, it's so cold. Everyone just want to sit in one corner and eat the comfort foods. Because trust me, it's the time that you just want to eat comfort food. I, I was watching and um, um, reading some messages on Facebook. And, and someone was saying, oh my gosh, I've been eating everything I see. I don't know if I've got a problem. I said, no, it's the season. Because it's so cold that your body just wants to put something in the mouth and keep active you know so i could have been sitting down doing that but i decided no i'm gonna sit up and i'm gonna put on my makeup and do my hair and i'm gonna dress up and i'm gonna come and chat with you about something so exciting that's sacrifice so how much of yourself are you willing to give up in order for you to get that thing that you're looking for We've talked about being healthy. Again, this is one of the ones that I am really, really so big on. If you watch my YouTube channels, you see so many things I've talked about on how to be healthy. Now, touch wood, I always say to people, since the last time I had my son, who is now 12, I haven't seen a doctor again. I know. I have no problem against doctors but I know that they are as human as I am and yes they might have gone to the medical school to learn all they could learn but I have stories I have instances of when people went there just for the most basic thing and they come out with some complicated sickness in hospitals when my third daughter was she was only three months and we went there she had a cold it was just a cold we were locked in there for over two weeks my child was crying to go home because what happens is sometimes they're just trying an error trial and error um let's let's try this one um let's try that one these are human beings that are being put on the shelf for trials and i don't want to be privy to that i don't want to be one of those statistics that went to hospital and from one little thing ended up with another there was a story of someone who went with ingrained toenails and and ended up dying in hospital and you hear all the news and the stories about that that breakout and that breakout and wash your hand and clean your hand and i don't want to deal with all of that and so what i do is i watch what i eat i watch what i eat okay yes occasionally i give my hands up sometimes when i see my son eating his um processed sugary food i look at this okay can i have a little bit please and i put it in my mouth but yeah i know how far i go with those but on on a bigger level i watch everything i eat. my big question to myself is what will this give me and that's why i took up a course in nutrition because i was curious i wanted to know what people need to eat to have a healthy body i told my story about how my dad died from um what did my dad it's not high blood pressure um stroke my dad died from stroke and my big brother also died from high blood pressure and so you know what they say oh yeah it might be in your family line or whatever no i read books that says 
you can prevent it. I bought books and books and books on nutrition. I want to know what relates to things like that. And so, you have to be willing to give up things in order to maintain something, in order to have something. So, give up the unhealthy foods. If the bigger picture is you want to be healthy, you cannot eat unhealthy food and be healthy at the same time. They don't work together. And this is why when people come here, you know, like most times I consult with clients on hair loss. And I remember a lady who came here once and I was explaining to her, we're going to dig deep into your family history and we're going to dig deep into what you eat. And I don't understand how just my hair should become, ah, uh, okay, you know what, because you don't understand that hair is part of your cells. And everything that goes on in your cells come from what goes through your mouth. I never knew that. Okay, you're hearing that now. So that's what it is. So you cannot expect to be healthy by eating unhealthy. That's just how simple it is. And so I don't know tomorrow, I'm not God, but I try my little bit to help him. If we want God to help us, we have to help him. There's a saying, God helps those who help themselves. So if you want help from God, help God by doing the right things. I, I, I don't know if it's one of the videos I mentioned. There's a man who died in France recently and they call him the, the Elvis of France or something like that. And I think he was in his 70s. And he was a non-smoker. And what did he die of? Lung cancer. Was that not very obvious? So it's like, I was saying to somebody the other day, we, we live in a time when there's so much going on around us that sometimes we cannot help it. And I'll give you an example. Genetically modified foods, to the point that you start hearing organic, non-organic, and so these are scenarios where we cannot help. You may say, I want to eat fresh, I want to eat vegetables, I want to, and then you walk into the shop and they've all been modified with different types of chemicals that you probably don't know about. That's, that's beyond us at this stage. But if you now deliberately go and buy things full of sugar, deliberately, you walked into the shop, you bought it, you put it in your mouth, and then you hope and pray that God will help you so that you don't develop diabetes. How is that possible? 